Hi, my name is Attila and I'm the Technical Marketing Manager here at EK. In this video, we will be talking about few of the latest EK products. Our first stop, the VRM Bridge, or as the full name says, EK Quantum Momentum VRM Bridge ROG Maximus 12 Formula DRGB Plexi. Why did we develop it and how did we develop it, you ask? Well, ASUS goes way back on implementing liquid cooling solutions directly onto motherboards, and some of them date back even to 2008, like the ASUS ROG Striker 2 Extreme. Liquid cooling the motherboard became popular again around 2013, with VRM sections getting more demanding, and that is when ASUS introduced the ROG Maximus 5 formula. It came with an integrated water block as part of the VRM heatsink. The idea stuck around and the cross-chill cooling solution was born. It can be found on modern Maximus Formula motherboards as well. The Maximus 8 formula was the first one to feature an EK badge on the VRM cooling block, thus named Cross-Chill EK, a water block air cooling hybrid co-designed with EK. Fast forwarding to this day, when ROG Maximus Formula is still a very popular high-end gaming motherboard and the latest model is equipped with a Crosschill 3 VRM cooler. While it's better than the previous generation, connecting the liquid cooling loop, the VRM block and then the VRM block with the rest of the loop is just not elegant or easy. It requires several angled and adapter fittings to make it work. And that said, you now understand why we developed the VRM bridge. But there were several ideas on how to solve the issue of connecting the VRM cooler with the rest of the loop. A few sketches and samples were made, but just weren't good enough. And then finally, our R&D team came up with the product that we can see today. The result is an elegant and clean product, looking a bit like a distro plate. It connects the VRM and the Velocity CPU water block, leaving the end user with only two connection points. Very clever, huh? And better yet, the way the VRM bridge is mounted is a patent pending solution. The user simply needs to install the bar fittings, apply some silicon grease to the bar fittings, and don't worry, the silicon grease is not soluble, so it will not contaminate your loop, then unscrew the one screw mark in the manual, slide open the bridge, carefully push the bridge onto the bar fittings, slide the locking mechanism back, and fasten the screw that you initially removed. And a very important final step, don't forget to connect the RGB. That would cover everything we wanted to share about the ROG Maximus 12 formula VRM bridge, which will surely make your liquid cool build as clean as it can get. After the next topic, our distro plates in general and D5 pumps. Our fan base was very eager to see the reflection distro plate in action inside the Lian Li O11D XL, so here it is. What is the point of distro plates and why are they so expensive? Well, it's a big piece of acrylic and it takes a long time to be CNC milled. Also, in contrast to other distro plates on the market, the EK Reflection Series waterways offer guaranteed compatibility with other EK products. The number and placement of ports are carefully planned for the best possible user experience. This also means less tube bending and clean runs, as you can see on the example here next to me. RGB implementation is also a top priority for EK and that is why we are using the anodized black aluminum cover that hides all the unwanted LED hotspots. Going further down the list of features, we should mention that it is also equipped with a physical flow indicator, very handy for indicating the speed of the pump. And probably the star of the show is the D5 pump. We are very proud to be offering genuine D5 pumps with most of our distribution plates. Unfortunately, there are a lot of lookalike pumps on the market that are labeled as D5, but are not genuine. As a closing sequence for this video, we will tell you how to identify a true D5 pump. First of all, take a look at the performance ratings. A true D5 is usually rated at 1500 liters per hour, with a maximum head pressure of 3.9 meters. While specifications can be faked, the physical appearance of the D5 is difficult to copy.
One of the most distinctive things about a genuine D5 is its metal housing as opposed to this pump right here. The second most important thing about a D5 pump is its bearing. It is an ultra hard, very resistant ceramic bearing ball, on top of which the rotor is balanced. In contrast to the other pump right here, is using a simple shaft-like bearing design. The magnetic rotor always balances itself ideally on the ceramic bearing. It makes the pump very robust and the parts that are exposed to the fluid are corrosion resistant, which provides an exceptionally long service time. The beauty of the ceramic bearing ball design is that even if the ball bears down, the rotor will still be balanced on it perfectly since the magnets inside the motor are pulling on it. Sleeve bearing type pumps can be more prone to issues because when the shaft wears down, the rotor will be able to move around, creating unwanted noise. There, we have to end this one here. I hope that we shared some interesting facts with you in this video. Until next time, goodbye.